the next, the next uh, speakers are going to speak about the Israeli side, and this is Professor Gilboa and, uh, and Dr. Yaeli Bloch. Uh, Professor Gilboa was introduced already before. He is the head of our School of, uh, of Communications and the Center and Director of the Center of International Communication. And uh, Professor Gilboa is also happens to be a graduate of Harvard. <laughs> so and. Uh, and he uh, will start, and then uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Yaeli Bloch will continue and give the data and analyze the data that they have, uh, they're going to present to us. I think we are going to continue exactly from where uh, Jonathan Reynolds ended. I, uh, no. Um, I obviously agree with his uh, findings, but I may not necessarily agree, uh, agree with uh, uh, his conclusions and policy prescription, because one of the questions is, what is the place and the size of liberals in the American political system? There are three groups in, uh, in the American electorate, Democrats, independents, and Republicans, and the size of the independence has doubled, and even more so in the last decade. Even not all Democrats are liberals. So when we look at the figures here, uh, we have to take this into consideration. Uh, this is our topic, what Israelis and Americans think about U.S.-Israeli relations. So we will provide uh, the larger context. Um, our basic uh, rationale and assumption is that uh, public opinion is a significant factor in the politics and decision-making processes in both countries. Sometimes it, uh, it was a decisive factor. Otherwise, one cannot understand how much efforts, energy, resources, leaders are devoting to communication strategies, polling, uh, communication advisors uh, and, uh, and, and many activities designed to influence uh, public opinion. In the new politics, even in Israel, Israeli leaders such as Rabin, Netanyahu and Barak uh, have been very sensitive to Israeli public opinion on crucial issues. Netanyahu reads polls uh, uh, almost on a daily basis and, and um, uh, it considers uh, public opinion very seriously. We know that Barack uh, looked at public opinion polls just because, uh, just, uh, just before um, refusing uh, to sign the agreement with Syria in 1999-2000. Uh, uh, it, it is similar in the United States. Many, many public opinion polls are being conducted on Israel and the Middle East and, and other issues. Um, it seems that Obama has been misled about Israeli public opinion when he uh, pressed Netanyahu on settlements. He was told that Israeli public opinion also opposes settlements, so this might also play some, uh, some role in his decision making. Our presentation uh, would be, will be divided into two parts. The first part is going to be on Israeli uh, opinions on the United States. The second part is going to be on American attitudes toward Israel, and the first part is going to be presented by Dr. Yali bloch Elkor. please. Okay, uh, let me just introduce the, Dr. Yali Bloch. She is a senior lecturer at the School of Communications. She is a graduate, she is a, our own PhD, and then she was three years at Columbia, where she has uh, performed uh, research and uh, she is uh, now she has published articles uh, one of them in, in world politics and her recent book is uh, selling fear counterterrorism the media and public opinion published by university of chicago press yaeli please Thank you, good afternoon. Um, the data will present you straight from the oven. We conducted a comprehensive uh, poll. Oh, what, where? No. Okay. 
Uh, we conducted a comprehensive poll on, uh, of uh, Israeli public opinion on uh, the United States-Israel relations. As uh, Ethan uh, mentioned, uh, it's a follow-up. This poll of 2012 is a follow-up to two previous surveys from 2007 and 2009 on these issues which enable us to look for uh, trends. Uh, the main findings could be summarized as following. Disapproval and criticism on past policy and actions versus expectations and optimism about the future. Uh, so without further ado, let's see where Israel is. Stands on different issues related to United States-Israel relations. Uh, we can see, it, I, I, I uh, bought uh, I also brought a, a laser point which I can't use now, so I'll just give you a, a, a tip for the next slide. Usually the blue lines is the positive side, and the red color, the red line is the negative also in the, uh, in the following uh, figures. We can see that uh, Israelis uh, view President Obama with uh, increasing suspicion. You can see that uh, from 2009, the percentage of those who viewed him positively uh, has dropped sharply to 38%, from 60% from a majority, while the percentage of those who view him unfavorably uh, had, uh, has risen. The two lines actually have converged uh, through the years. Now, this might be a result of the occasional tensions between Obama and Netanyahu, a result of Obama's efforts to reconcile the Arab world, and uh, of his current policy, uh, towards the Middle East, as we'll see next. 41% of Israelis are unsatisfied with Obama's policy with regard to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. 40% look at the differences between the, the, um, the satisfied and unsatisfied. The satisfied is actually twice as large than the satisfied uh, group. And 53% of Israelis uh, 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 feel that he has erred in his policy with respect to the Arab Spring. In the following questions, the question we found that almost 40% of the public, you can see it from the right, in the right part of the slide, uh, believe that this policy, Obama's policy on the Arab Spring, weakened the standing of the United States in the Middle East. Therefore, it is not surprising to see when looking at the possible outcome of the 2012 presidential election, that a higher percentage of Israelis uh, believe that uh, Romney, the Republican uh, candidate, will better promote Israel's interests. Sure, but right. please take into account that there is a very high percentage of don't know in this question, 50, almost 50%, which means one out of two people didn't know the answer. Uh, which makes sense in, uh, uh, when we are dealing with questions that uh, they are uh, speculation-based questions. Uh, however, uh, this line of thought continue uh, with 30% of Israelis believing that uh, Romney, if elected, will improve United States-Israel relations, while only 8% think that Obama will improve it in the next four years. Actually, you can see that a higher percentage believe the opposite about Obama, that the relationship between United States and Israel will, uh, will worsen. Um, nevertheless, if we look, if we move to look at the United States as a whole, uh, if Israel, in this question, if Israel is faced uh, with a serious crisis, it threatens its very existence, the so-called the moment of truth, we see that more than 90% of the public believe that the United States will help. I just want to make a note that the 2012 uh, data uh, actually combines two categories, this uh, answer of 91% of would help, uh, 53%, and would help under condition, uh, 38%. But what's interesting to see here is that the two lines actually through the years have diverged with only 3% believing that the United States will not help. In respect to Iran. Okay. Um. <laughs> you should have said it maybe earlier. <laughs> well, at least I hope that you saw the, the figures. Uh, uh, in respect to Iran, uh, uh, you can see that a high majority of the public, two-thirds of the public continue 
to support military strike on Iran if uh, diplomatic and economic efforts fail to stop Iran drive towards a nuclear bomb. But it's very interesting to see, though this percentage didn't change between 2009 and 2012, uh, in the following question, when we added the element of United States opposing such a strike, and asked it to the same group who just supported it, to those 66%, we actually noticed that 44% out of them, which means almost half out of them, are not supporting it anymore. Without the backup, without uh, the United States support, uh, they're not supporting it anymore. Uh, these results suggest that uh, Israelis continue to see the United States as a very close and important partner and with the need to deal with uh, Iran in the Arab Spring, it is not surprising to see that a very high majority of the public, look at the blue on, on the right side, 87% in 2012 uh, uh, believe that the Middle East strategic interests of the United States and Israel are similar or complementary interests. Uh, a belief based on shared values and interests uh, with the notion of Israel being the most stable and reliable country in the region. Conclusions. As we started in the beginning and we just saw from the data, uh, we can see that the main findings actually shows us that Israelis are critical and apprehensive about President Obama's Middle East policies. We saw it regarding the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, the Arab, the Arab Spring, etc. But continually positive and optimistic about American leadership in the region. Uh, overall, Israelis have strongly positive attitudes towards the United States and continues to perceive the United States as a loyal ally and a friend. Um, these are the main points. With the limited time that I have, and I now need to, uh, <laughs> to have this uh, time also for the American public opinion, uh, I could only give you a taste of the main uh, course and would highly recommend that you go online to get the full and most interesting picture about uh, Israeli uh, public opinion on the United States-Israel relations. Thank you. I will now uh, continue with uh, the other side, what Americans think about Israel and the Arab-Israeli conflict. And uh, I think that most interesting finding, if we look at long-term trends, is that despite the tensions and the disagreements of the last, uh, say, at least three years uh, between uh, uh, Obama and Netanyahu, there has been no change in the distribution of American opinions about Israel and some major issues um, uh, in the Middle East. Uh, uh, I will begin with a question about uh, favorability, and uh, you can see um, here, I guess, uh, this is 1989. Uh, uh, 89 is uh, all kinds of disagreements uh, between the Bush administration and the Shamir government. Uh, and you, but it, it's, a pretty, it's pretty stable up here between the favorable position of the United States, of, of, of Israel in the United States, and the numbers here, again, uh, in, the last, uh, in the last few years, uh, we can see 71 to 24 look favorably uh, toward Israel. Uh, basically, this would be considered like a stable distribution of opinions. Um, how Israel is regarded in the United States as a highly reliable ally, and this is even more important today in view of uh, the instability in the entire region and the movement toward Islamism in the Middle East. And again, you can see um, this is agree that Israel is a loyal US ally. Again, if you look at the distribution here, it is about two thirds of Americans. And surprisingly, 2011, we have the record high percentage saying Israel is a, US, uh, a loyal US ally, very stable and consistent. Uh, here's a question asked in 2011, how important it is for the United States to protect Israel? 40%, almost 40%, very important, altogether 76% saying it is either very important or somewhat important to protect Israel. Huge percentage 
uh, compared to 20% saying uh, the opposite. Aid to Israel, highly sensitive issue, especially in times of uh, financial uh, crunch. Um, uh, this, uh, the question, there are two questions here about financial and economic aid. Still, about uh, just about 50% the majority say it should be increased or kept the same. 22% uh, reduced and 24 stopped. But when it comes to military aid, then we have again the two thirds, almost the two thirds majority saying it should be increased or kept the same. If we look at the distribution of sympathies between Israel, Israelis and the Palestinians from uh, even from 1988, it was a little bit uh, low because of the Intifada. This number here is very interesting because it was registered during the first Gulf War when Israel completely cooperated with the United States and did not respond by fire to uh, Saddam Hussein's uh, Scud missile attack, 64. But you see, if you look at the distribution, it's going up. The last few years, it's 63, 63, 61. Uh, so again, about two thirds of Americans sympathize much more with Israel than with the Palestinians, which are here down, down, um, down, the, down the graph. Uh, Jonathan uh, spoke about, uh, about uh, polarization. Uh, so I don't think we need to speak much about that. Yes, I think Republicans are more sympathizing with Israel than Democrats and the independents. The independents are here a uh, little bit more than the Democrats. But, you know, um, J Jonathan talked about it and I think I agree with his uh, presentation of data. This is just about the Palestinians and again you see 42% support uh, the establishment of a Palestinian state Democrats 54, independents 45, Republicans only, 20, uh, only 27. So you can see here the polarization that Reinhold uh, was speaking about. This is Iran. We have a few uh, important uh, polling data on Iran. Um, Bill Schneider said uh, this morning that um, after Iraq, American public opinion has to be convinced that Iran has uh, nuclear weapons or is serious about developing nuclear weapons before they could support uh, a military, U.S. military action or Israeli military action against Iran. So here you have polls from that, from uh, from 2006. Uh, great majorities here, various polling organizations. They all think that Iran indeed is attempting to develop nuclear weapons. Um, here we have a distribution of opinions whether or not nuclear Iran represents a threat to the United States. Again, a clear majorities are saying so, that Iran, nuclear Iran would present a major threat to the United States. Here we have a distribution of opinions since 2006 about military action against Iran. Uh, the distribution is close. But we can see here 40% support military action if everything fails. If negotiations failed, if, uh, if uh, economic sanctions fail. So a little bit over 50% uh, versus 40% think that yes, uh, the United States um, may use uh, force to stop uh, the Iran um, a nuclear weapons program. Um, here we have uh, figures for, for uh, Americans uh, who were asked about support for Israeli military action. And again, we see uh, large numbers over majorities uh, say that indeed, if Iran uh, is building nuclear weapons, um, uh, Israel, uh, they would support Israeli action, military action against Iran. I want to move quickly into uh, American Jews and uh, refer to a theory known as uh, the distancing theory. Uh, Jonathan Reinhold spoke about liberal left in American Jewry. They have made the claim, including Peter, Peter Beinart in his uh, recent book about the crisis of Zionism, that American Jewry is distancing itself from, from Israel. Uh, this is why it's called the distancing theory there's no evidence whatsoever for that theory in public opinion polls. Ted Sasson at Brandeis University, Stephen Cohen at the Hebrew University have conducted several polls 
about this theory and are refuting it. No evidence. So this is. What? what? Oh yes, I have. I have. Okay. So you can see uh, no, there's no change. A lot of stability in people saying they feel close to Israel. And oh, you want update? There's an update here for 2007, 2010. Very close, fairly close. And so I think we see some continuation of these trends. Now, again, we talk about general feeling. If you were to ask for specific, uh, specific policies, then you may see more reservations, but the distancing is a general theory, uh, uh, not, not, uh, not based on specific, uh, specific issues. Um, now, this, is, uh, this question was asked uh, about American Jews, uh, and we can see here a, a close plurality, 49 to 45 percent, this, uh, disapprove of uh, Obama's uh, handling of U.S.-Israeli relations. Here you can see this is by Gallup. Uh, Jewish Americans started with uh, a huge ratio here, 83 uh, percent uh, supporting um, President Obama. Uh, it went down uh, to 54 percent. This is, this is the general trend in, in American general public opinion. It's very similar, but of course uh, the Jewish, Jewish uh, ratio, 83 percent went, went down to 54 percent. General public from 66 percent to 41 percent. Yet when American Jews were asked what would determine uh, their vote in the elections, you can see economy number one, healthcare number two, taxes number three, national security number four, U.S.-Israeli relations number five. It's lower on the list, but it's higher than what uh, has been suggested in earlier presentations uh, this morning. And here we have a summary of the American positions. I think that here Americans were asked uh, for, for the reasons they support Israel, uh, and you can see here, important ally, values, and supporting United States partner with the United States in our fight against terrorism. And I think these are basically the three reasons behind uh, the support of Americans for Israel. In conclusions, I would like to argue that public opinion uh, has been the strongest component of the special relationship between the United States and Israel. This is a term we are used uh, to, to describe the relations. Uh, this is a two-way special relationship. It applies not only to the United States, as is mostly the case. I think it applies also to the Israeli side. The evidence we have presented today and we have in other, uh, in other uh, studies su suggest amazing and sometimes surprising similarities between the attitudes of Israelis and Americans uh, in general and on, uh, on the regional issues. Uh, if you compare uh, Israeli attitudes toward the United States with Israeli attitudes uh, toward other countries, you would find that Israelis are the strongest supporters of the United States in the world. And Americans are the strongest supporters of Israel uh, in the world. There are a number of explanations for this, but I think that um, uh, it means that, uh, among other things, that uh, there is no replacement for the United States in Israeli policy, and there is no replacement for the United States, uh, Israel, there is no replacement for Israel, uh, for the United States as a significant U.S. ally in the Middle East, and these principles are going to guide American-Israeli relations in the near future. Thank you.